I want to try to, um, I feel compelled to go further in Paris of Olive. And in the back of our mind, back of my mind anyways, is always the issue of, um, we brought up the difference between the uh, Sidim and the Gra. You don't want to hear me? I don't need it. So we said as follows, we said in Parakhafala, Va Adam Hayasher Haoved Ha Amiti. What a magnificent paragraph. Ha Adam Hayasher Haoved Amiti. Beautiful, right? La Yafana Datai Umar Shafte Bais Havidose La Yisparak. This is real instructions from Agodal Adur. La Yafana Daitai Umar Shafte Bais Havidose La Yisparak Shemai. When I'm doing my avoda towards Hashem, you shouldn't let your mind wander. Even if the wandering or if the tangent or the <coughs> kavana here in my thinking is to do what's good for my tahara and what's good for my goof, 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 ruchnius uh, things, ruchnius things. Even if it's ruchnius, don't do it. You see, even though I said I'm not going to talk about it, I can't resist. <laughs> the, the, I, I just, I mean, just as an example in history, um, like one of the big machlekes in, in history was with Reb Label Eger. I mentioned Reb Label Eger lived in Lublin, a city of Lublin Arab. He was a grandson of Rabbi Kiva Eger, who was a uh, Misnagid. And he defected. And he became a Hasid. And the Hasidim loved the fact that he defected. And they, as a, uh, a little bit of a shtach, they used to always call him um, Label Shloyma Zakivas. <laughs> they, they used to, because his father was, they were Miachism always to Rabbi Kiva Eger. To show that even Rabbi Kivager came around. Rabbi Kivager had a son of Schleimager, famous Gadol Ador. Rabbi Kivager was a Gadol of all the Doris. He was uh, magnificent, like the Gra. Rabbi Kivager was like the Gra. He was called Akiva Shleimer Label. Akiva Shleimer Label. Akiva Shleimer's Label. <laughs> label Eger went to visit the uh, Izbicher Rebbe, and the Izbicher Rebbe seemed to be. A puzzling uh, personality, and but somehow or another, whenever these big, big misnagdim passed through and they met Reb Label Eger, which is very counterintuitive, um, they became Hasidim. You know, you would think, you know, okay, if you meet the Svazemis, you know, like, it's like such a, <laughs> like the same thing, or the, or the Balatanya, you know, like that was like real Seichel, but the Reb Label Eger was not a, what we would consider um, logical. And somehow or another, that attracted the masters of logic. So I would theorize that uh, the, the pshat in that is that um, somehow they felt that there was a part of them that wasn't being satisfied. There was a part of their neshama which was not which was not satiated by lambda salam. So they saw something which was contrary to logic, and they saw such an avodas Hashem by, by the Izbacher Rebbe, which everything you learn, learn through the Me'ah Shiloyach of the Izbacher, everything's upside down. Everything's upside down. Esav is the Tzaddik, Yaakov is the Rosh. Everything's upside down. And somehow or another, it appealed to it appealed to their something, to their neshama. But anyways, this Rebbe Label Eger became the, he was the Rebbe, but he was also the Moil of Lublin. The Rebbe, many of the Rebbe's did the Bris Mila because of the Kedusha Shibai. And um, his minhag was that he he would do bris mila f- immediately after shkia, <laughs> a few minutes after shkia. No matter what, you know. Oh, it's nighttime. Let's do the bris mila. It says in the Torah, "Vayashkim aver baboiker." You have to do biyoy mila, so you have to do mila by day. He did it by night, and uh, this was one of the um, became famous, and it was one of the um, 
the areas where the misnagdim would point to that the Hasidim don't keep halacha. Reb Tzadok, who was a Talmud of the Izbacher and then Reb Leib Eger, Reb Tzadok, and he was also a Misnagid that <coughs> came over to the Hasidish side. He was not only a Talmud, uh, Misnagid, but he was a Nechad of the Gra. Reb Tzadok, Rabinovich from, from, from the, I believe from the Gra's third daughter, he was a, he was a, a Nechad. So he, um, a huge, I mean, doesn't need my, uh, my approbations here, but uh, I mean, got a lot of and learning from Tzaddik. Um, so he wrote uh, a kuntras explaining and justifying the behavior of Rabbi Bala Eger. Why he does Mila at night. <laughs> and he, he wrote such a kuntras, and it was sent out to all the Gedoyle Lita at the time. The essence of his 10 page kuntras in very small print. Um, it could be a safer. It could, it could be a safer. The, the, the essence of it was that the hachana for a mitzvah has a din of the mitzvah. And since the hachana of the mitzvah has a din of a mitzvah, so it's, he wasn't late. In other words, he started the hachana when he knew he had to do a bris, he started the hachana, that's a chama. And he was making himself with the kavanas and tefillahs and whatever he did to be making himself. And he wanted to be making himself as much as possible. So therefore, he would make the bris dafka as late as possible, and if you hold like Rabbi Tam, as late as possible means that as soon as you get into Ben Ashmashes, you're still there. So he 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 was machmir to do a bris mila as late as possible because that way he could get the more ha- more hachanas in than he would be able to get it anyways. And and Rabbi Tzadik Tanya, that's bris leibus mana. Same thing. Same thing, like the, so. The, like, and he brings many, many rayas up uh, halacha that it could be. Okay, but well, let's get serious. That's that's not the that's not the did. That's not the halacha. It's it's a uh, justification for something. But um, it, it's it's a it's a good example of what was then. Today, um, the Hasidim keep halacha, and the Misnagim don't necessarily keep halacha. <laughs> like everything is all mixed up. Now. But at that time, this was the. This was like a, a, a finger pointing to the Hasidim at large, and, by, and, it, and it particularly bothered them because, look, the, 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 the master Paisik of almost all the generations was Rabbi Kivager. <laughs> Rabbi Kivager is Sefer Yisoyed in, in, in Halacha, and his grandsons are keeping Halacha. So it, it was, so just a, as, a, as an example in history of, am I doing Halacha or am I doing what I think is right? Notwithstanding Reb Tzadik's tshuva, am I doing halacha or am I doing what's better than halacha? Is there such a thing as better than halacha? Um, or don't be so smart, you know. <laughs> you know, stop being a smart aleph. The Torah says, "Vayashkim Avram and Boiker." Are you better than Avram Avinu? Vayashkim Avram and Boiker. He did Rizvila. Where was his achanas? Reb Tzadik says, "They ask him about Reb Weiger as he started in the morning. Maybe he finished it by <laughs> then. <laughs> How do you know?" Like, uh, okay, so I'm just, I just want to put that doubt out there as as uh, as background. But it sounds from his, from his lashon like the last few words. It sounds like what you have in a hinani muchan or l'shem yichud, those kind of tikkun alma or whatever. It, it, it sounds very much like that kind of lashon that you find that the Hasidim say. And then yes, that what and that proves what. Well, that's why I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, me too, me too. Yeah. Um, but I just want to be Madai Ha Adam Ha Yasher Ha Oved Amiti. Two um, qualifications here. Yasher. What's a Yasher? Adam Ha Yasher. That means if I'm thinking Yasher, I, I'll just tell you what I think it means and then we'll learn. Um, you know, I, I, I talk to people daily about their issues, their problems, you know, you can bounce it. if you want to make a big decision, you can bounce it off me, you know, whatever. People think it's worthwhile, come. But um, what I've realized the last few years, maybe everybody realizes is Pshita, but what I realized the last few years is that when I have a job here, when listening to somebody, to try to filter out all the Mishigas and get to the essence of the thing. So as an example, like if somebody says, um, I want to get divorced. Okay, why do you want to get divorced? Um, well, you know, my, 
my my husband doesn't get up for chakras on time. Um, it, it, he's not hygienic enough. Um, he doesn't learn with the kids in Shabbos. Uh, he does blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I hear, you know, let's try to be misogynist. that, but divorced. I mean, <laughs> divorced is a big move. You know, look what you're doing to your to this person, look what you're doing to yourself, or you're, look what you're doing to the kids. And, and I dig, I start to dig, and, and I'm just telling you what I've, something I've come to, you know. You start to dig, and is that really the reason? Is that really the reason? Is that really, a, you know, and what it is, is very often, you know, in the, in, the, in the non-Jewish world, it's very simple. You could have a thousand reasons why you want to get divorced, but really what it is is you're having an affair with somebody else. <laughs> That's the, or in, in, in our community, Baruch Hashem, that doesn't happen too often. It happens too, but it doesn't happen too often. It's, uh, you know, whatever, you don't like the guy. <laughs> Let's just put it flush in general. You don't like him, so if you don't like him, say you don't like him. What I mean to say is that when I understand Yashras, uh, Yashras, and it's easier to do it when it's not for yourself, um, that's the Indian of speaking to somebody else, is that let's <laughs> trace you know, you All kinds of reasons and all kinds of chashbainas and all kinds of things. Is that really what's driving you? So the Adam Yashar is thinking 100% in Yiddish glat. Yashar means glat. Uh, think glat. And think glat means to try, and this is a big avoda to do within ourselves also, to try to get rid of all the, 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 the klipos and the, and the layers of of, of cognitive dissonance that surround every, and I'm using cognitive dissonance correctly, I think, because what happened, like, the, the way I understand this, I, I'm not that you're a psychologist, there's, just, there's a couple psychologists in the room here, but my understanding is, you know, in, in music, um, you know, if the leader plays one note off, so now the whole philharmonic goes one note off. <laughs> And, and you have dissonance. That's what dissonance is. Dissonance is the, the, the it's, everyone's playing everything right, but it's just right, 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 but wrong. <laughs> like something's, like it doesn't have that gishmak. Um, you can experience this sometimes during um, Kaladin here in the show. <laughs> 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 right, like somehow, like everything becomes wrong. And if I have one Nakuda in my mind, cognitively, which is wrong, What's going to do? It's, it's going to shut my whole brain along with it, and I'm going to come up with all kinds of things. So this is not Yasha. My understanding of Yasha is so you can be an Oyved Amiti, Yasha Oyved Amiti. You can be an Oyved, not be Amiti, not be Yasha. Like there's, and you can be Yasha. And by the way, Brachus is called Sefer Hayyashorim, Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, which I want to get to the Avos here. That's what I want to talk about today. Um, say for Hayyusharim, like there was something about Avram Avinu that it was a Yasher. He had every reason in the world to believe in Avodah Zarah. He, he, you know, why should he separate from his family's house? Why should he get thrown into furnaces? Why should he have to go against everybody? Just let me live in peace. So you worship Avodah Zarah. Like what's, it's so easy to rationalize, you know, even, look, this is the way I grew up. This is what my father said, you know. The, the Lech Lecha was, let's get down to the, the real Yashras, the real Emes, and the godless of Avram Avinu was Echad Haya Avram, that he took the whole world on, and not only took the world on, he took himself on too. Like he took every reason that he should be doing so. This is very important in our decision-making processes, whether it's in Avodas Hashem or whether it's just doing the right thing or the decisions, the decisions that we make. My father, in his simple way, used to say, when somebody says to you um, three times, it's not the money, then you know it's the money. <laughs> like, uh, I, I, I live, you know, but like, <laughs> it's about what kind of mochaba are you going through? You know, it's not the money, it's not the money. Or, you know, whatever a sentence starts with, you know, I'm not concerned about my covet, but... <laughs> You know, it's it's the, you know the, we we understand what's like really the 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 essence. So listen, listen to the opening line, and you'll you'll see what what's really going on over here. So now he's saying as follows: Mizu hay sagam kain kol inyan avodasim shala avos. Remember, I just said the avos sefer brachus sefer hayosher sefer hayosherim. Ramban calls it. So he says. What was the avoda of the avos? Cholat tzaddikim harishonim and all of the original tzaddikim shekaimu as a Torah kaidem nesinasa that kept the Torah even before it was given. Everybody knows Avram Avinu 
Kaim is called Torah Kula Ad Shulay Nisna. Before it was even given, he kept the Torah. As I'll say that his Kloyos, somehow his kidneys, which is the Makam of Bina, were somehow um, teaching him the Torah. I, I think, by the way, the deal there is that Kloyos, your kidneys, are the um, part of you which filters the good from the bad, the waste from the. I think that's what Kloyos do, right? Hmm? Pretty much, right? So, like, why were his Kloyos <laughs> teaching him Torah? Because so much information is thrown at you in this world and in the world of Abraham Avinu, and in our world, right? The whole internet's out there, and now you need your cloyers to do some work, and um, you know, and you know, sometimes um, like it doesn't work. You go to somebody who does dialysis on your brain, you know. <laughs> so let's 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 you know, you're not able to distinguish between waste and and goods. So dialysis of the brain, a new a new uh, treatment that I will make up right now. Um, <laughs> So the Avais were being taught Torah by their Kloyos, meaning there's so much information. Let's see, Avram Avinu says, let's see if I can tap into a higher form of information that, and, my, and, and there's so much coming at me. There's so much coming at me. And by the way, Avodah Zarah is very, very spiritual. It's not that like I'm not, I'm not going to go with my Taivos. It was very, very spiritual. But let me, you know, you know I said this, I don't want to get political here, but I just... I'm just giving a muscle, that's all. But, um, you know, like, you know, I speak often about, you know, people who go to healers, energy healers. So I think it's connected Allah. My own personal opinion is it's connected Allah, energy healing, not Like, uh, it's, uh, it's connected the Rambam, it's connected. But a um, person comes comes and asks a Shaila, um, the, 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 what's, what's driving them is two things. Number one is they want to feel better. So if it works, it works. Um, and number two, um, it's very spiritual because if you if you consider the fact that I'm you know, I'm not taking a pill, he's not even touching me, the healer. He's just having some kind of kavanas and transference of energy, and this, it's a very spiritual thing. It proves, in a way, that there's a spiritual aspect to life, and and it's it's not everything is science. It has that beautiful element to it, so people actually turn it into a big mitzvah. Like the doctors are wrong. Like like the doctors are often wrong. I'm not saying not, and I'm also not saying that that doesn't work. I'm just saying the Torah gives gedarim of what you're allowed to do, but they'll come up with a million different the gedolim said those and the gedolim a million different things which are not true, in order to make this true. You understand? Like in order in order for it to work for them, and that's what's us here. So when you talk about um, the Avais, so says Rechaim Lashon, Vizu Haisagam Inyan Avidasim Shal Avais. Let's understand the Avoid of the Avais. Vacholat Sadikim Harishayim Shikaimu Esatarik Kodim Shinikna, Kodim Nasinasa. Majidarship Kazal Allah Pasuk. You see, the Pasuk says, By Noah already, Mina Behema Tahira, Mina Behema Sher Enena Tahira. How did he know which was a Behema Tahira? It wasn't given until Parsha Shmini. We're still in Parsha's Noah. How did he know which was a kosher animal, which was not a kosher animal? He had some kind of Kloyos told him. His Kloyos told him. But, I mean, from the moment that Akash Baruch Hu's Mechadish, that there's such a thing as Behemoth Torah, Behemoth Tmeya, okay, I have to think about that. And, and Noach access to Zeruch HaKadosh to say, lions two, um, cows seven. He had to do that. The Amru says in Yom HaFches, Ki Eim Avraham Avinu Es Kol HaTorah. Avraham Avinu is Mechaim, the whole Torah. And the Avos we have over and over again, even Adam Arishon was Makayim Kol Hatar. Now, let's understand it. It's not that they had a din that they have to keep the Torah. There was no din of Erev Tchumin for, for Avram Avinu or Yaakov. Deem Cain, because if there was a din, so they would have never taken the matter into their own hands. He explains, they would never take matters into their own hands. The law is a law. Even if they understood intuitively and instinctively that they need to change something. Yaakov Avinu would have never married two sisters, Rachel Vileya. This is a derisive. 
a chayz So, so what we what we have here is a kasha and a teretz and a hesber. The kasha is if Yaakov Avinu kept the whole Torah, if that's true, as it says in all these Barabakovas that he brought us, so why did he marry two sisters? Sacha, that's like a big one. Marry two sisters, Not a lot of married two sisters. You can't marry, you can't marry sisters, two sisters. Okay, but we just said he keeps the whole Torah. Okay, but here he figured I should make an exception. Many, many cases, um, if, if, if Avram Avinu kept the whole Torah, so why did Hashem have to tell him to do a bris milah? Should have had one already. Keeping the whole Torah. Why did he give the malach and basar v'cholov? Ayikach, cholov, v'chema, uben habokar. And he gave it to the malach. You wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it. Those who keep the Torah from Jews don't do it. Avram Avinu did it. Kept the Torah. Kasha. The Mavarshim asked the Kasha, Yitzchak said to Esav, go out, shecht me some food, bring it, what food? Was he, would you eat from the Shechita of Esav? Right? Hashkachas, <laughs> Esav. <laughs> Who, who's going to eat from the Hashkach of Esav? Yitzchak. Yitzchak says, go, take, take Yaakov with you, he'll be the Bashkiach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Go out, find an animal. Was it a kosher animal? Uh, maybe he shechted a lion. He brought it to the lobo, or he had a, he had a sack in of shechita, or he shot it with a bow and arrow. I mean, what, what was going on over there? And all the Mepharshim kocht the, 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 uh, I, I in my notes, uh, the Marit al Ghazi in Bukharis, which was a beautiful, beautiful period on, on the Sech de Bukharis, pages about every case that, that the Avois did not keep the Torah, I would say more often than not. Where do we find already that they kept the Torah? <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a one word answer. They weren't Jews, they were Jews. They, they kept the Torah. In the words of Nefesh Achayim, there was no din. They were using the, the Torah, let's say it, as a, they had a nevuah of the Ratzon Hashem, and they used it as a guidebook to make tikkunim and do what they had to do in this world to make the world a, a makam of a deer of Rakadish Baruch and there were no dinim, there was no chiyuvim, it was just something that was miskala to the Avais. Like, like Goyim, Christians could do this till today. They had a higher madrega, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not a higher madrega, it's a different thing. Except for the Shavu Mitzvah's Bnei Noach, Goyim can do what they think is correct to be Ovid as Hashem. That's why Toysu says even, even Yashka is not a problem. If, if they feel that's a way to be Ovid as Hashem, go for it. It's Taisus Hall, Rabbi Natal. Hmm? Rabbi Natal. That's Taisus. <laughs> it's 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 like it's not like okay, they have a hetter because you're a guy, it's a hetter, not Matsuva and Shida. There's no that, you be over to Sashem. That's what you should do. You don't be over to Vodazara, because that's one of Zion Mitzvahs and they know if you be over to Sashem. Do what you need to do to make the world better to do Lafi your Seichel. So what so so it's good for Christians, it's okay for Christians. No need to stop them from doing that. No need to stand on the street corners and try to talk them out of out of Christianity. There's no point. Just don't try to convert us. And you know, if if you're um, if you're Jewish, you don't have the option. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just to, to illustrate the point. I'm, I might have once told a story that uh, told again. But um, years and years ago, um, I was invited to the University of Buffalo to speak up by the Hillel director to speak about um, Orthodox Judaism. So, okay, so I prepared myself, of course, I'll go to speak to a group in Hillel. It wasn't just Hillel, it was like a big crowd, a few hundred people. Um, speak about Orthodox Judaism, I prepared myself. I, little did I realize that um, in the same, it wasn't just me speaking about Orthodox Judaism, there was a conservative rabbi speaking about conservative Judaism, <laughs> Judaism and a reform rabbi speaking about reform. We were sitting at a panel. And each one, the, the, you know, the, the guy, the Hill director got up, he says, okay, we have the three rabbis here, and everyone's going to speak for 15 minutes about their, um, 
you know, what they believe and uh, explain it, and then they'll be open for questions. I would have never um, <laughs> participated in, in, in this type of a panel, but I mean, I should, I'm there. I didn't know. They just asked me to speak. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask uh, who else is being like, I'm not the type. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm looking around for the Roman Catholic priest. <laughs> you know, like, what's the. So, I, no, but I, I want to I just point out, like, in a, in a minute. Um, The, 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 the MC was didn't want was concerned with what order to go in because he didn't want it to be Orthodox conservative reform or reform service. so he went in order of age I was the youngest um, the reform rabbi was the um, was the uh, oldest so the the reform rabbi nice fella um, his name was Golem. <laughs> Just like, uh, Golem. Golem. That was the name. From Prague. From Prague. A Prager. Happy to be a nice fellow. But um, nice fellow. Nice guy. Did a lot of chesed with people. But um, he, he opened up his speech. I, I actually had never heard. But he opened up his 15 minutes by saying, um, you know, in, in, in Judaism they say, it's a yid. He says, I say, it's a schwer to sein a reformish yid. Very difficult to be a reformed Jew. And I'm thinking to myself, I was 21, 22 years, I'm thinking, it's like, like, what's the difficulty you have to decide if you want to eat Burger King or Pizza Hut today? Like, what exactly is the difficulty of the Yiddish guy? Or do whatever you want. So he says, do whatever you want. What's difficult about that? Oh, so he's alumnus. Be Shlima, you're an Orthodox Jew, and you have rules, and you have a Torah, and you have a Shulchan Aruch, and this is what I do, and this is what I don't do, this is what I eat, this is what I don't eat, this is what I say, this is what I don't say, you're a Shomer Torah Mitzvah. Ashrechem, he looks at me, Ashrechem. But there's no decisions you have to make on a minute-by-minute on a, a minute basis. You just decide one thing, to be an Orthodox Jew. You're keeping Torah Mitzvahs, tell me what the Allah is, and I'll do it, whatever the rabbi says, I'll do it. That's easy. He says, with us, you've got to figure out, is kashrut right for our family? Well, you know, it's more expensive on the one hand, it's cleaner on the other hand, it's more healthy on the other hand, it's good for the economy, it's bad for the economy. God, maybe, <laughs> like uh, Torah, maybe, that's also a consideration. Very difficult, every time you want to eat, you have to make a whole lumdus. And he says, and the, the difficulty of this is, he said, that there's such a thing as a yetzahara. And, and you might say, no, I decided to eat bacon and eggs for breakfast. That's the correct decision. But how do you know it's not your Yetzirah telling you you just like Yetzirah, you just like bacon and eggs? And all of a sudden, I'm listening to like the altar from Kelm. <laughs> you know, like, like, whoa. <laughs> like, like, you know, I just tell you, the, 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 he, he spoke maybe for five minutes. And I remember till today. The conservative rabbi went over his time by about a half an hour. And I can't remember a word of what he said. <laughs> it was just get drayta cup, like nothing, nothing. In his and I spoke for five minutes, and it made a lot of sense to him. But what, what, what did he keep Allah, or you don't keep Allah? And that was the, the vikuach, and, the, and, the, and the, the conservative rabbi just basically became um, un unimportant in the whole conversation. And the, 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 the students that were there, they, they hopped this. What, what, the point is this. That, that for this reform rabbi, um, he's right, except that it was quite, he's, he's still holding in a, in a madrega of koidamat and terror. That's the problem here. He's holding in a madrega of koidamat and terror. It, it's, it's, um, you have to realize that it's, it's um, when, when, when Hashem gave the terror at Sinai, things changed. And I, and I, I want to explain this. This is, what I, this is exactly what I want to explain. But when Hashem gave the Torah at Sinai, things changed. But Koydamat and Torah, the Seder. So like like a guy, a guy that keeps Zion Mitzvah's Bnei Noah, don't go too far off, but then do whatever you think is correct for Avodah Hashem. Assuming that the Kavana was, is, is Tahar and it's, it's Avodah Hashem. But that was, that was the Shita of Koydamat and Torah. So I gave a mashal like this. Let's say um, you have a, uh, a piece of land, a farm, which is uh, 500 acres wide, and you've got roads and you've got things, and you want to give you could you want to you don't need a license plate on your car, you know, when you're driving in your own property. That's Allah, at least in America. 
um, you don't need a license plate. You can drive around your Jeeps and your tractors and everything. You don't have to be registered as long as you don't go off your property. So let's say I have a seven-year-old kid. I give him the keys to the car. I give him the keys to the tractor drive. Okay, is that smart? Is it stupid? It's stupid. Is it against the law? It's not against the law. So, um, so normally you don't do it. My, my cloyos are telling me don't give the kid a key to the car. It's a dangerous thing to do. He's going to kill all the dogs and stuff like that. <laughs> what are you giving him the key to the car? That's what my clients are telling me. But sometimes my kidneys will tell me that, you know what, this kid has got to learn a lesson. And it's worth it for me to give him the keys to the car and let him go out of control for me. I make some kind of a crazy cheshman, which might be a good cheshman. So that's, that's, it could be acceptable. I'm the kid's parent, it's my car, it's my kid. Somehow it could be more acceptable. However, once you get out into the street, you know, there's a law here. There, 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 there are laws. There are there, we're, there's there's a um, there's a social contract which says that we have to listen to the Chuke Hamadina. There is traffic police. There, you, this is not this is no longer a good idea. It's the law. And once it's the law, you can make all the cheshbonus in the world. You will get arrested or fined or ticketed. It's it's, it's not going to work. These cheshbonus you make on your own property. You can't make these cheshbonus outside, right? This is. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, a lawyer. I don't know if anything I just said is true. I'm just saying that, like in Alpi Svar, you can you can you can understand it. The, the others were on their own property. There was no Torah. When you when when you ask the question, how did Yaakov marry two sisters? Well, uh, the, uh, it's, it's very interesting. I was looking this morning. The Briskarov answers. How did how did how did Yaakov marry two sisters? Easy. Um, there was no dinner, there was no such thing as marriage. He never married two sisters. <laughs> marriage came about, says the says the Briskarov with Mount Tyre. How did Amram marry his aunt? These are the two examples that were kind of lesson. Easy. There there was no such thing as marriage. He didn't marry his aunt. He didn't marry two sisters because there was no such where did marriage the Rabbam says this before Koida Mountain Tyra, Haya Adam Isha Bashuk. He liked her and he brought her home. That Rambam is not so much different than Rivka passes by Yitzchak, Yitzchak sees her, she falls off her animal, Yitzchak sees her, vaya 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 ha'oyhela, he brings her into his tent, vaya vaya, and he buries her, he loves her. No kedushin, no, no marriage. So Briskarov says easy. How did Yaakov Avinu marry two sisters? He didn't. There was no issues per se. Why didn't Yaakov Avinu do a bris milah? It's not just brisk her up. Because who said there was such a thing as an orla? What is he supposed to do? The orla wasn't invented yet. It's a brisk her up. So it's a typical brisk of art, which makes perfect sense and no sense at all. <laughs> because it makes perfect sense logically, in the sense, okay, there's no orla yet, but he, he kept the whole terror. <laughs> Abraham Avinu kept the whole terror. So if he kept the whole terror, so then there was an orla, right? So how, how are you miyash of these two things? And the answer is that I believe this is what he's saying here. The answer to all of these kashas, there's Svarim written about it. There's Svarim written about it. I actually wrote one. <laughs> the, the, um, this, I have a sefer called, that I wrote called Rabbi Yosef Engel al Torah. And I'd say half of the sefer is dedicated to this Avera that the Avais did and that Avera that the Avais did. So how, how, how were they able to do it? With all kinds of lumdashe answers. <coughs> Not mine, but I was malakit. The simple shot is that they were allowed to do whatever they wanted. They kept the whole Torah means something different. They kept the whole Torah meaning that they understood that, that, that with their nevuah with their ruach hakodesh, they 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 received the guidance which told them, you know what, this is a behemoth tahira and this is a behemoth tmeya like noyach we see. Now, um, what should I do about that? But derech klal, I'll keep it. But if let's say I see. That there's, you know, but klal, I'm not going to give my kid to the keys to the car, you know. But but let's say I see in this domain that I'm going to create yud be shifte yisrael, which are going to bring make a tikkun and bring the ghoul into this world. Okay, then I understand I'm I'm on a level. I don't mean I'm on a level, but I'm in other words I'm working on a level which that is permissible because the whole thing is tikkun olamos anyway. So, so before Matan Torah. So, what he's saying is that Zuhi Avodasa Shalah Avos, Tzadikim Harishonim. The derech of the Avos and the Tzadikim Rishonim was that they understood that, that, that it was all about making Tikkunim in the Yolamais. 
So if it works, it works, and if it doesn't work, they'll do. Let's give it a new name now. They'll do an avera lishma. They'll do an avera lishma. For the, in this case, it's worth breaking the rule. It's, bra- it's worth breaking the, the 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 standard rule. Did Chazal ever refer to like marrying two sisters as an avera lishma? I'll show you. Good question. But it's a big chiddush to say it's an avera lishma. But it's an Aver Lishma in the, in the sense, the, in the way I'm going to explain Aver Lishma. Was the question on the Aver or the Lishma? Lishma for sure it was, because they yeah. wanted to be Misak and Elamah. It wasn't an Aver. So the Briskarov says it wasn't an Aver. Who said it was an Aver? There was, there was a marriage. There was no such thing as marriage. What, what happened, here's my question. What happened to Matan Taira? So you can look at it like this. You could say Matan Taira. You could say, okay, listen, you're out of your private property. You're into the, you're on the streets now. Get you, get, get you, get yourself a license. Or you could say, there's another thing that happened here, and that is that self called self, the avos, the tzaddikim rishonim, everybody embraces, everybody embraces. They were individuals. They were masake noelam u'malchushakai. Once we were in Mitzrayim, we came out of Mitzrayim. At that moment, we became a people. A people, that's the big paradigm shift. We stood at Harsinai, we stood at Harsinai as a people. Why didn't Hashem give the Torah to Avram Avinu already? So we became a people. A people has a different set of tikkunim to make. You could say simply, well, now it's not for us to break the laws, whatever, also true. But it's a different, it's a, it's a different paradigm. Once, once you're, once you're a, an ummah, it's a different paradigm. You know, like there's no more... You know, like uh, in the beginning of this country, not even the beginning, like between even 20 years, there were squatting laws. You're allowed to go to a piece of property and lift uh, and squat, and uh, you know, and that's my piece of property. Go do me something. And now, you know, here we are, 70 years into it. You know, they're taking all these pieces of property away from everybody. What happened to the squatting laws? Okay, we're a country. You know, like it can't, it can't have such a have cares if we're going to let you be there. Then, then the Jews, Arabs, it becomes like a, a complicated. There has to be rules, there has to be gedarim, there has to be laws, or even more, Hashem invented idea of marriage. That you know what, we thought that the only way you could be related to somebody was if he's your brother, he's your sister, he's your father, he's your mother. No. HaKadosh Baruch was machadish, something that didn't even exist before. Somehow at this period in history when we became an ummah, you could, there's another way to be married to somebody. There's another way to bring it, and that is to, to marry them. There's another way to connect neshamas or to be related to someone. Marriage. Chiddush. So Koyda Matan Torah says the Rambam. I'm really echoing the briskarov. I'm just giving a hesper to it. Koyda Matan Torah. There was no such thing. There was no such thing. Maybe there was such a thing as Behema Tzmeya, Behema Tahira, like Nayach no. But maybe there was, who said there was such a thing as Shechita? So Esav did the Shechita. Maybe, maybe he said, Asher Ahab Nafshi, bring us a Tzayid, Asher Ahab Nafshi. He meant, don't bring me a lion. Shechita, this, it could be that these were things that were nishadish to the Ummah, that weren't nishadish to the individuals. The Nakuda is that, that before Matan Torah, it was only, and this is what he's saying, it was only about Tikkun Elamas. After Matan Torah, it's about existing as a people. Existing as a people, there has to be rules. Like if somebody a uh, hundred years ago wanted to do the mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, come to Eretz Yisrael, and you know it's the Wild West. Now you want to come to Eretz Yisrael and do the mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael? It's organized, supposedly. <laughs> you know, there, there's there's a mahalach here. You can't just do whatever you want to do. So the, if if you want to exist as a country, that's a new mahus. <laughs> it's something new. You want to exist as a people, that's something different than than than. And our job became different. We're being misak in the oilum in a different way. So if 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 that and that by the way, what I'm saying now, if you if you get me answers all the kashas, close all the svarim about Kodama and Tara, how they do this, how they do that, how they do this. They can do whatever they wanted, basically, because there was no contract to do anything. It was all about Tikkun Ilamais with their Klayos. So the Klayos Ilam Denu, their kidneys were separating the good from the bad. And in this case, um, if you have very, very sophisticated Klayus, and good from bad has a different definition, so Avram Avinu's Klayus told him, Yaakov Avinu's Klayus told him, marry two sisters. This is what's good for me, because this is the advice. It's, um, 
Is it is it is it uh, logical? I mean, why is any of this stuff logical? You see, we say light light cohabited with his daughters. You know, yuck. You know, I mean, who said there was anything wrong with that? Am I being provocative here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, who said there was anything wrong with it? You're mine. You're mine. We're judging it. There's not a riot, or just an adultery. I can't hear everybody. I'm sorry. What? It's either in the north, or it's in your mind. Okay. And it was neither here. Oh, that's clear. It was neither. It's very clear. It's very clear from from the partial that the girls themselves felt that they were doing something problematic. They felt that they had to intoxicate their father. Because he was Bob they, 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 the, 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 they, they felt that he wasn't in the mood. His home, his wife just died. He's <laughs> uh, like his wife just died. But uh, I don't know. I mean, in other words, you can, um, from there came David Amel, from there came Mashiach. It's a Kupa Shal Shratzim. Is it a Davr Shal Maguna in history? Yes. No question that it's, it's Maguna in history because we have the Torah. That's our mind and that's the law. But I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, be, I don't necessarily know. Even in the Pesukim, and I looked at the Pesukim as recently as this morning, that that this there's an emphasis on the fact that they did some kind of a, a terrible uh, wrongdoing. I, I don't know. It's true. So let me let me just read you this because the time's up. Let me just uh, the Vilna Gaon. This is the title. This is in the um, some Pesukim is called the Pesirosh. Some places called the Shiltus. Questions that Ruchaim Velozhin, our Ruchaim Velozhin, um, asked. His Rabbi the Grom. Avera Lishma. This is the title. Avera Lishma. Now, I'm sorry, I'm just going up Thursday to go over a couple of minutes if you don't mind. But Avera Lishma, the Gemara says, God Allah Avera Lishma, me mitzvah shalai Lishma. Before she Gemara. That Avera Lishma, it's better to do an Avera Lishma than a mitzvah shalai Lishma. So understand, obviously, neither one of them is good. I mean, one of the best things to do is a mitzvah Lishma. But if you have a choice to do between Avera Lishma and mitzvah shalai Lishma, Go for the Aver Lishma. What it really means is, just in the touch of it, is that every Maisa you do has the Maisa that you're doing, and it has the Lishma, the Kavana of it. So now, um, if I do a Mitzvah Lishma, bingo, I got my Mitzvah with the right Kavana, with the right Kavana, I'm doing good deed with good Kavana. If I do Aver Lishma, I'm doing bad Maisa, good Kavana. If I do Mitzvah Shle Lishma, I do good, good Maisa, bad Kavana. So what the really the Gemara is really asking, what's more important, really, the kavana or the or the or the ma'isa? That's really the Gemara's question. The Gemara says, "God will have lishma mitzvah lishma." Better if you do things with the right intention, even if your ma'isa is bad, than to do things with the wrong intention and your ma'isa is good. Intention is, is strong. There's a tremendous tradition that the Gemara is saying. There's a tremendous tradition shot in the Gemara. But God will have lishma mitzvah lishma. Go for the lishma. Your kavana is more important than your than your than your actual ma'isa. It is a tikkun. Well, well, lishma. It could be conditional. Lishma, yeah. lishma. So lishma, that's what lishma means. Aver lishma says the guy. Like hutter misman matan teriklum. There is no such thing. So in the time of matan ter, there is no such thing. Now he knows, like I know, that the Gemara was talking about after matan ter. Yoel Aisha is okay. It's after matan ter. Like hutter misman matan teriklum. La hayuduim because if you're knowledgeable, meaning if you're a makubal. You can do anything you want. I'm making a tikkun. Right. I'm making a tikkun. Omar said, What do we need all the what do we need all the mitzvahs? Do it, make a simple question. Am I going lishma or am I not going lishma? Very simple. If it's a mitzvah lishma, don't do it. So forget about lishma, he says. And here's our, here's the problem. The problem is that one of the things that happened is that Kaidamat and Torah, Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, when they, when they said Lishma, they were really Lishma. Ish ha Yashar ba Oived ha Miti. That's the beginning of this, this paragraph here. Yashar, say for Yashar. The, the, the Yashris of, of Yaakov Avinu was that he was Lishma. If we would marry two sisters, we can make all kinds of, you know, cheshponis. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we just, you know, it's a, we just feel like marrying two sisters. Like that's, you know, you can make Kabbalistic cheshponis maybe, but we know what's driving us. And maybe I'm, I'm Lishma, maybe I'm not Lishma. 
who can say that they're 100 percent lishma and doing an aver? So the gross says no more aver lishma. You see the the the, um, the, the gemara says that in Shushan Habira. <clears throat> when the, when the uh, Persians gave their their Nazi decree that all the Jews have to be killed, by Yizak Zaaka Gedolo Mara Moid, everybody gave out a scream, ay, 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 like that's it, we're living so nicely here in Shushan, and they're going to kill us all, right? Holocaust, going to kill us all. Because um, I'll say, interesting that the same lotion appears by Esav when he found out that he didn't get the brachas, and Yaakov took the brachas, by Yitzhak Zalka, Gedolo, Umar, Ma'id, was an interesting, interesting washing that's the same. So it says, because I'll say that when, when, when Yaakov heard Esau scream that he didn't get the brachas, he gave a little smile. <laughs> Didon Natsach, right? I, 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 I succeeded. I got the brachas, he didn't get the brachas. For that smile, the whole jewelry had to scream. Esav's scream by Isaac Zaka Gedolomar. What, what's the pshat? The pshat is that that Yaakov was a hundred percent lishma in taking Esav's clothing, in lying, in 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 the whole business was 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 wrong, a vero lishma, but but there was one part of it that was not necessary. You didn't have to smile. <laughs> that didn't make any tikkunim in Shemayim that you smiled. What are you being masameach? That your that your brother is suffering. And for that one piece of the whole story, the unknown piece of the whole story, the whole Judaism had to suffer. So what you're talking about, um, you know, us doing our very lishma. Who knows? You know, it's, it's a nuclear, it's a nuclear decision. I meant well. You know, <laughs> it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a nuclear decision because you don't know how that's going to come out. So says the Goyin that for us, al tishayin al dasayet. So you don't know, like the, you don't know that you're doing it 100 percent, right? What Yaakov Avinu married two sisters. He says before, v'im Yaakov lokach beis achios under the title of her lishma. V'im Yaakov lokach beis achios va'amram nasa doydasay zayya kaidem at entire. Avom eish shekibel Moshe atayim misinai. Even though you understand, and I think that these words, these four words, bring us closer to what this the 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 the, the they were talking about. Tikun nishmasay. I know this is right for my neshama. I know it's right for my neshama. Uh, I, I can't tell you. Not one, not two, not three people have told me that they should marry a certain non-Jew because it's the right thing for their neshama. They just feel it. Mm-hmm. She's also blonde. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces to this, but she, they feel this is the right thing for the child. How do you? How can you be so sure that this is the right thing for your neshama? Even if you're a makubal, and makubalim sometimes do very weird things. hevel, gam ken hevel. I, the Gemara says, the guy knew the, the Gemara. I, the Gemara says, Mashamru Chazal Gedola Aver Lishma, that sometimes you have to do an Aver Lishma, exceptions to the rule. Kemai Yael Eshes Chaver. Hatzalas Kla Yisrael. It was a whole different story. Hatzalas Kla Yisrael. Esther, why did she marry Achashverosh? Hatzalas Kla Yisrael. It's a different story. She was willing to go to Gehenna, maybe. I don't know, if she, you know, I doubt if she did, but if she was willing to go to Gehenna for Hatzalus Klai Yisrael, I'm willing to marry Achashverosh and give birth to Daryavosh. So what, what, what we're talking about over here, this it's so muridic, that don't make the cheshbonus of Tikkun Nishmasai, now that the Torah was given, make one cheshbon. That, that's to do the halacha. What should be my kavana is that I'm by doing the mitzvah, by doing the halacha, I'm being Masaka and Elamis. Forget about Tikkun Nishmasai. I'm doing, I'm doing the Ratzon Hashem, and that's the best thing for the world. Trust God. And that's what happened when we became an Ummah. When we became a people, we signed this type of a social contract, which tells us that, that it's Kedai to go, to go against your Lishma, either because the guy says it's because who knows if your Yitzhah is going to, or the whole thing changed, paradigm shift. Okacha, okacha. But that's, that's the Avoida of the Avais that we learned for. Sof kol sof, everything was Lutzarech Gavoya. It's like on Sunday.